video I made a little diorama using um, just some foam and the water was made out of um, toilet paper and very high gloss water based lacquer. I think it came out fairly good for my first attempt at doing something like this and uh, I hope you have a go at this because you could do this with a lot of things and I think it's worth a, it's worth a go. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial and I hope you enjoy the video. I just glued down a stack of um, XPS foam in sort of a, a stepping um, pattern and then I just started cutting away with a knife. I cut um, just pieces out where I, I wanted to just, I don't know, I just wanted it to look rough and natural as possible. I didn't have any real reason and rhyme besides having the creek running down the middle. And then once I'd cut away as much as I wanted, I got my lump of concrete and started just ripping pieces away just to give it a natural look. After I'd done this almost everywhere, I also used um, a wire brush just to get on the, um, the bits. I want them to stay sort of flat, but they have to have some sort of surface. And also paint won't sort of soak into it if I don't rough up the surface of it. I completely coated it with just watered down black acrylic paint that I just put in this little, little spray bottle. And that's the first step done. It was pretty quick and easy. And then more foam, just randomly cut and shaped and sanded and just sort of placed around so I could get a feel for um, how the big rocks would look. And it drew one like this. I did a few like this and sort of made sure that they were at angles just to avoid making things look too symmetrical. And um, I just played with them until I was happy with them and then I glued them all down. I just watered down my PVA glue and I just started laying it down quite a lot of it before I started putting down sheets of toilet paper. I didn't cut them perfectly because I knew once they were wet I could sort of manipulate them and move them around and, and shuffle them with the brush. I put down three layers consecutively. I didn't wait for anything to dry. I just smothered it again with the watered down glue and then another layer of paper and then I did that three times. Once I um, had all the paper down, I was able to use the brush just sort of to, to push the paper, make kind of like waves, but it, because it was so rough underneath where I had pulled away with the concrete, I couldn't make a, a sort of a specific pattern. So that was learning curve number one. You can see all the little kind of like ripples and it almost it, it forms a natural pattern on its own, which is interesting. And the more layers you put on, the more it will kind of make bigger ridges on its own as well, which you can just uh, you know, push them around once it's nice and soft. Once it was dry, and I mean thoroughly dry, I um, just put some, it's like a black wash, it's a bit of brown in this, but it's just to, it's to stain it really and get into all the crevices. And once that again was dry, I just started laying down colours that, um, I used a photograph to try and um, recreate this little scene. And I was trying to mimic the colours, which I found a little difficult because I knew that I wanted to have depth in the water. But um, I just started laying it down and then would darken down the centre. I didn't show as much painting in the video as I actually did because I had to keep playing with it and, and fixing it and altering it the whole time. But I did get there with it. And uh, if I do this again, I will be able to show you in a, in a better way. As you can see, I've darkened down the middle. I would strongly suggest you use a lot of different colours just to help achieve the realism. And then I started putting in stones 
knowing that I wanted them to look as though they were in water, I knew I had to soften a lot of them. So I just popped them down roughly because it was such a rough surface to paint on. And then I um, washed the brush and then I just softened around the edge with a wet brush, kind of like using it as an eraser and just kind of rubbing it away a little bit and blurring all of the edges. I did about five or six different colours of rocks as well, just trying to make contrast and fooling the eye and avoiding making patterns and all the things that you want to do when you're trying to create something that's natural looking. After doing the bigger rocks, I uh, put in some smaller ones, sort of like pebbles and that sort of thing, and I didn't make them blurred, I left them fairly clear. It was very, very surprising after the second coat of lacquer went down, they started to become very three-dimensional looking. You know when you see videos of people using epoxy resin and they will layer up, say, a koi fish, and it'll be sort of layered between each layer of paint and then resin and then paint and then resin it started to take on that effect even though I only did three layers of this resin or the lacquer sorry but um yeah you could paint in between each layer of lacquer which is another learning curve I found on this you could get really really clever with this I put quite a lot of lacquer on this when I did it. I have issues with being impatient and thought that um, it might give a better effect if I put more on there, but obviously it just took longer to dry and I had foiled my own plans. So just put on a, you know, a normal amount of lacquer. This is a quick drying one too. It said two hours on the can, but because I put so much on it, was it was like three or four. But it's summer here, so it dried pretty quick. It was good. I got this done in about two days with all three layers, which wasn't too bad. I just dry brushed all of the diorama, all of the you know the rocks. With just like it's sort of like a cream color. A stone colour, I suppose. It's sort of an Australian stone colour. There's no blues or anything in it. Once I'd done all of that, I just gave it another dark wash, just sort of to stop everything free floating, just anchor everything down by connecting it with, with the darkness. And it would make it look like it's wet and there's soil and all that natural stuff. You can see how fast that's soaking in, it just disappears before the eye. A wee bit of a gap under there, but I don't bother with stuff like that because you don't notice it in the end when you're making something so natural. Bit of um, balsa wood, I just kind of whittled it and sanded it really well. Used toothpicks and a pencil and I really distressed it. gave it a stain after I'd done this to it. I just, I want it to look like an old tree trunk. I didn't do the greatest job on it, but I haven't done this before either. The, a lot of this stuff is just me making it up because I really wanted to play around with the idea of water. So I kind of threw some stuff together with it really. And I get to see this soak into it. So yeah, I had my reasons. <laughs> I used that same sort of cream colour that I'd used on the stone just to lighten it up a wee bit. Just brings out all the detail in the in the wood. My sawdust that I've made, it, it's so fine. It's almost literally like dust without the saw in it. I uh, just... Uh, sifted it really really well and put some very watered down green paint through it 
I wanted it to be more like moss than um, like flocking because it would look more like leaves on a diorama this small. So I wanted it to look much finer than that. This is a bit of a job, this one. And I made a lot and I used all of it too. I had to take it outside. You couldn't see how green it is, but in the sunlight you can see how green it actually is. It's quite lovely and lumpy. So you must make sure that you spend a lot of time as it's drying and keep coming back to it over and over and over and using the back of a fork or something and then just keep breaking it up and breaking it up. And you could even, when you're done with this, get something like a mortar and pestle and then just grind it and make it, you know, finer and finer and take all the lumps out of it. You can get yourself some really fine stuff out of this. It's worth the effort. Just some soil also out of the garden that I've gotten. I, I sifted it very finely as well. It's quite sandy. Do make sure you put soil in the oven because it will have living bacteria in it and you're likely to have a living diorama somewhere down the track. You know, you might want mushrooms on it, but maybe you won't. So, you know, if you don't want mushrooms, put it in the oven. I always put foil under everything so I can gather it back up again. When you have to make your own resources, they're very precious. Sheet of plastic to make the waterfall. Very, very thick water-based glue, this one. It's a really good one. It, this took days to dry, though. I was, I was a little bit confused by this. I had it sitting in the sun for days, and it just didn't, didn't want to dry. But it did give me a chance. As it dried, I would come back to it with a toothpick and then just kind of manipulate it and, and push little bits of holes and things in it so it would get rougher because I didn't want it to dry in one flat sheet otherwise I'd just use a, a piece of plastic and you see how it's dried it, it came out quite good but I think it's because of the glue I used it's a very nice heavy thick glue when I glued it down I uh, kept coming back to it as well with the toothpick and pushing it down to make sure that bits didn't stick up I wanted to make sure that it was incorporated with the new glue and seamlessly going into the diorama. And see, so I'm pulling little bits down, so it just little, you know, splashes of water and that sort of thing. It's starting to look quite good. Doing the waves is easy. I'm, I'm disappointed in how much they stand out. I, they should have been more subtle. But of course, that was another learning curve for me. But I just um, use a wet brush. You just lay it down, use a wet brush, and once again, use a wet brush that's clean as an eraser and just pull paint away. So you're just finding the line and you're kind of blurring it on one side just so it gives a wave effect. This type of water wouldn't have needed this many ripples. My mossy flocking. All that work for that little bit in the bottom of the jar. How stingy. Uh, Water-based glue, of course. And I just started putting it down pretty much everywhere. But, of course, I didn't do an even layer. I made sure there was sort of, you know, some bits heavier, some bits lighter, and some bits not at all. I had to be so careful with this. I was frightened of losing it. I barely had enough to actually cover this. I'd like to have done it down the sides, but uh, yeah, I ran out. You can see I've stained that with that same dark sort of brown blackish wash, just so it will uh, look more aged and sit into the diorama. I'm just kind of throwing stuff around at this point, you know, just checking how it looks before I glue it down. I do this with everything too. And then a light, much lighter green uh, layer of paint, very, very finely put on top of the moss. Just again to add light, because if I went and put a lighter flocking again on top of this, it would be too thick and it would alter the dimensions of the diorama.
I just use this green tablecloth paper to make the fern leaves. They're thickly layered, so I, it's probably about a dozen leaves in one quick kind of uh, snipping here. It's a, it's a bit of a cheat. I was a bit lazy with this. I should have probably made some better ferns. But it was an experimental diorama, so yeah. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. They came out alright looking, but they get a bit limp after they sort of sit around. You have to keep picking them up because of this type of paper, so I would use a heavier paper than this next time. I just poked a hole with a screwdriver and then I put a bit of that water-based glue in and then popped that in like that and then I was just able to manipulate it with tweezers or whatever and then sort of fan the leaves out. They look quite good. I mean, it's it's a pretty rough cheat, but they look all right. A bit of clump foliage. The clump foliage is just to add a bit of contrast, a different texture and some other colours and, and it's a bit of a filler as well. And of course, like with with all the other greenery, I will put a lighter lime green kind of um, highlight to it with a brush later on, just to help it stand out and look as though it's got sunlight hitting the top of it. So I don't go making it too heavy with more flocking and sprinkling that on top. And finally, when I'd done everything, I put down just some more of the lacquer because I wanted things to look wet like the stones at the edges and just up the edge of the water where it's sort of touching the bank and the underside of the logs and over that white paint that I had placed on the glue. Just the little touches. It's always the little things that, that make things so much better. It's worth that, that little extra effort. And that's the little mountain creek complete. I found there's an excellent learning experience to create. So I hope you do have a go with this one. It's, it's really worth, um, worth what you can see when you learn from it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and the video. And I will see you next time.